In section 4.4, we will look at the last section on probability, which deals with counting methods. And as you've gone through the previous sections in this chapter, hopefully you've noticed that really every probability problem boils down to counting. We have to count how many items fit a certain description. So in a deck of cards, we have to count how many cards there are and how many of those cards are face cards, for instance, or how many of those cards are diamonds. So counting methods are vital to probability in a lot of cases. Now for ones like a deck of cards, counting is as simple as just counting through. So you can go through and you can actually list them all and you can count them. But it turns out that there are many examples where we don't actually want to sit there and list out all the possibilities. For instance, if you want to count how many possible license plates there are, you wouldn't want to list all the license plates because odds are you'd miss some. And more importantly, the number is so huge that it would be impractical to sit there and count all of them. But with some fairly simple principles, you can figure out how to count without actually counting, or more specifically, how to count without actually listing all of the items. There are three main topics in this section. The first one is this fundamental counting principle. And what the fundamental counting principle says is that if you're making a set of choices, like in this example, you're picking the brand of TV you're going to buy and then the type of TV. If you know how many choices you have or how many options you have for each decision, then you can figure out how many total possibilities there are. So here if we have two brands to choose from, and then once we've chosen a brand, we have three types to choose from. Notice this branching tree diagram tells us that there are a total of six possibilities for the kind of TV that we could get. And we can do it in either order, but the fundamental counting principle says if you have to make two decisions, basically, and you know you have a certain number of options for each one, if you multiply those together, you get the total number of possible results. And you can do this if you have three choices or four choices to make. You just multiply them all together. So there's an example with lottery tickets, for instance, and then these first several examples go through just different iterations of that same principle that you can think about making decisions like this and how many options you have for each decision. You can multiply them together. So the fundamental counting principle says you just multiply the number of options each time. There are a, there's an example here of, of kind of interesting, more complicated situations that you can solve in much the same way. So for instance, you have this these five seats you have to fill, and you're trying to count through all the different ways that you could arrange people in these seats based on some rules, you can just think through one seat at a time and think about how many options you have and work out the total number of possibilities using that fundamental counting principle. The other two topics are called permutations and combinations, which are pretty similar. Uh, it's important to note the distinction between them, but both of them use what are called factorials. And basically when you have something with a um, situation like arranging seven books on a shelf in seven positions, you would have seven choices for which book to place first, and then six choices for your second one, and five, and so on. So you have kind of what, what I would call this descending product. So you have seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. This pattern shows up a lot when you arrange things in order. So we take a shortcut and we just call this a uh, factorial, we call this seven factorial. So all it is is this pattern of multiplying, but we'll use this in formulas and so on so that we don't have to constantly write out this same pattern. Um, it's really just a, a notational shortcut. So there's an example uh, like that using that, that kind of um, sorting question. So permutations are this idea of whenever we're trying to arrange things in order, whenever we're trying to, to select things. It turns out every permutation problem can be done using the fundamental counting principle the same way that we saw like in these examples uh, here at the end where we're arranging things in order. You just think about, well, how many do I start with? I can take the total number of choices and that's how many options I have for the first position. And then once I've put one there, I now have one fewer options for the second choice, and so on. So you can read through the details on permutations, but that's the, the basic idea. And then uh, once you have that, there's a formula that you'll see that gets to this same place a slightly different way, 
um, using factorials. So you can read through this description carefully and see how it works, but basically there's this formula that comes out of this, and there's also a way to use your calculator to solve this. So if you have a graphing calculator, you can find this um, permutations built in and you don't have to use um, anything more complicated than that. But you can also use factorials on pretty much any calculator. So you'll see a couple examples of permutations um, just practicing with, with that idea. So permutations are when we're arranging things in positions. And so we're selecting from some group. Like here, we're selecting from a group of 18 people, three people to fill three positions, and we're sort of organizing them in these three positions. Combinations are very similar. The only distinction is that the order that you arrange them in is not important anymore. So if you're still selecting from some group, but you're not arranging them in order, that's a combinations problem. So there's a one example where it, it works it out kind of uh, the long way and thinks through all the possibilities. And then from that example, we work out a rule um, that adjusts the permutation formula into a combinations formula. So make sure you understand that the only distinction between permutations and combinations is whether or not order matters. So if order matters, it's permutations. If order is not significant, it doesn't matter, then it's a combinations problem. So there's a couple examples of combinations problems as well as how to use your calculator for these ones as well. So you can see uh, several examples like the ones you'll see on the homework. And then lastly, there's a quick example with um, using these counting methods within a probability question. So just applying this by counting the total number of possibilities and counting the possibilities in our uh, event that we're talking about. So there's several examples of that just to practice using these um, counting principles, the fundamental counting principle, permutations, combinations, uh, to answer probability questions. So that's section 4.4. Basically these three principles for counting without listing. You can use the fundamental counting principle when it applies or permutations when you're selecting from some group and then arranging and combinations when you're just selecting from the group and the order they're given in doesn't matter. So again, go through and read it carefully and follow along with the examples and watch those videos as needed. But that's the main idea behind section 4.4.